Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, April 17, 2023. Residents of St. Thomas are to see an improvement in conditions associated with the construction of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project. Prime Minister Andrew Holness gives the assurance as the pace of work increases and the August 2023 deadline remains on track. So far, 8.5 kilometers of the 14-kilometer four-lane roadway have been completed. This is the harbor view in St. Andrew to Albion in St. Thomas Leg. Mr. Holness toured sections of St. Thomas on Thursday, where he observed the progress of the project. Work is progressing. Uh, from what I have seen, uh, I'm seeing the, the um, foundational infrastructure being put in, culverts, the, well, the pipeline as drained is already done, but the, the drains are being done. Uh, and uh, I'm also seeing the impact on the traffic and on the drivers. According to Mr. Holness, three main areas of discomfort raised at a meeting prior to the tour are being addressed. To manage the dust nuisance, he says the National Works Agency and the contractor will increase both wetting and supervision of wetting. Instructions have also been given for residents to be able to access their properties with relative comfort. Meanwhile, in relation to the driving surface, Mr. Holness says this is more technical based on the level of work required before surfacing. But what I have said to the end of the, and I'm sure they will give directions to the contractor, is that there should be at least one lane that is uh, drivable. Residents of Sandside and Trinity Heights in St. Mary and adjoining communities are now receiving improved and consistent water supply. The commissioning of the Sandside Storage Tank Replacement Project on Thursday is part of a $22 million overhauling of the water supply system in the community. Acting Regional Manager of the National Water Commission, David Price, says over 120 households are being served by a system that is easier to maintain, has greater resilience and better water quality. So now we have completed a two-phase project with this tank being supplied by a second tank in Sand Hill, Sand Hill being the, the source. Those two additional infrastructure are now providing water on a daily basis to Sunside and the Trinity Heights community. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, says the investment in the 100,000 gallon tank is part of ongoing works in St. Mary. We would have done the shot pan corner um, system. We'd have done a distribution line in Castleton for 800 beneficiaries. We'd have done a system in Islington for 52 million with 1,500 beneficiaries. We've done a system in Marley for 150 um, beneficiaries. Barclaytown, Fellowship Hall, all of these areas in St. Mary have gotten upgraded systems in the last 24 months. Minister Samuda says work is also underway on the Jordan Well that serves Agualta Vale to Highgate areas. Cabinet has approved the award of several contracts to bolster public education. It includes over $848,000 U.S. to Cable & Wireless Business Jamaica for the provision of wide area network connectivity services to 68 institutions for three years. Minister with Responsibility for Information Robert Morgan provided details during a post-Cabinet press briefing last week. There was an award of contract by the National Education Trust for the construction of a classroom at the Bridgeport High School um, which is in St. Catherine. Um, this contract was of the amount of $223,625,000 to NF Barnes Construction and Equipment Limited. In addition, contracts valued at over $625 million were also approved for the procurement and distribution of grades 4 to 6 textbooks in language arts, science and social studies. This is for the academic year 2023-24 and is being done under the Education Ministry's primary textbook program. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce is moving to make doing business within the medicinal cannabis industry easier. Speaking at a press conference last Thursday, Minister Aubin Hill provided an update on the status of Jamaica's medicinal cannabis market. Under the International Narcotics uh, Control Board, uh, the INCB, which is um, a product of the UN Single Convention Treaty of 1961, we will seek to ensure that the Jamaican market has all the medicinal cannabis products that it needs and will therefore not need to import any medical or medicinal cannabis. The ministry is also working on the alternate development program ADP 2.0 to regulate the industry and incorporate more small players.
We've done a rough pilot before. We've learned some things from it, but we're going back to cabinet to have about 16 communities involved, including about 128 farmers. These are um, small scale and traditional farmers. Senator Hill adds that startup fees to grow your nursery for the first two years will be removed. This is to make the process easier for more persons to enter the market. And finally, the St. Elizabeth Office of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security will be handing over birth certificates to senior citizens to help them access benefits on the government's social pension program. Parish manager Michelle Sr. says over 25 birth certificates will be handed over to persons 75 years and older. She made the announcement at the monthly meeting of the St. Elizabeth Municipal Corporation in Black River recently. Ms. Senior says it is hoped that the handover will take place by the end of April, after which the senior citizens can transition to the Social Pension Program. The Social Pension Program targets all Jamaican citizens 75 years and older who are not currently in receipt of a pension, old age or disability benefit or income and are not living in a government institutionalized care facility and are generally described as vulnerable. Each beneficiary receives funds every two months, which will be credited to their bank account or disbursed via the applicant's remittance agency of choice. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.